As you can tell, we got a little bit of snow. I think we've got probably a good six to eight inches. I haven't had snow in a while actually, and this is some pretty good snow to remove. It's nice and light and fluffy. Shouldn't take us too long. We got Arrow running the snow blower. I'm running around on the plow. We're gonna get some of the snow off the roofs, shelter logic, chicken coop, high tunnel, all that good stuff. So we got another hour or two worth of work ahead of us. almost wrapped up with our snow removal. I just finished up the high tunnel behind me. This is its second winter. It's doing awesome. We're pretty cautious to get the snow off on top of our shelter logic and our high tunnel and definitely around the side so it doesn't build up too much. The plastic that we built it from is UV treated. It's doing great and the top railing that we built it from is super strong. So honestly we probably don't have to get all the snow off of it but we like to because we depend on this when it comes to the springtime. This year we decided to utilize the high tunnel as some storage space. So we've got lots of things in there, which has worked out awesome. I'm about to pull out the wheelbarrow and head over to the chicken coop because we're going to take advantage of this really warm weather we've had. And I'm gonna be cleaning out the chicken coop. Usually I don't do that till springtime. All right, 72 scoops later and two broken backs. We have finished. So we're gonna get some new straw in there. It's nice and clean now for them. I'm pretty excited about that. And we've gotta get this over to our compost pile.
The last thing I'm doing is scraping some of the snow from around the fruit trees that we have just right around the base of them. And I'm doing that just as vole protection because the more the snow builds up, technically the voles could kind of like come up in there and chew the bark of the fruit trees. We haven't had that happen, so I just want to be cautionary and take care of our fruit trees. It's our first winter with these fruit trees and other than that, I think they're doing great. We've been making a lot of runs out to the new cabin lately and it takes a lot of energy out of us. So we're trying to figure out a good food to bring out there so we can stop halfway, get some food in us, get some energy. And we decided on granola bars. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a bunch of oatmeal and some coconut shreds and I'm gonna be toasting these in some moose tallow. Like Eric said, we're looking for an energy source that's fat, fiber, some carbohydrates, and also protein, of course. Not too long ago, we found out about pemmican and pemmican sounds absolutely wonderful for what we're looking you know, for out there. It's fat, you usually use meat, dehydrated meat, and berries. And that's something we wanna make in the fall when we have some blueberries that we can air dry. That's just not in season right now, of course, since it's winter. So we're working with what we've got to get some good energy bars. Those are gonna take a few minutes to toast over there. A few other things we're gonna use. We've got wheat bran. Is that what this is? Wheat bran and nutritional flakes. Okay, we've got chocolate powder. We're doing some raisins. We've got some like mixed dried fruits, walnuts. We're doing chia seeds. We're doing some cinnamon, a little bit of salt in there. And the dried fruit that we're gonna be using was just like a trail mix we had. I think it's fig, plum, and dried apple. To help with the stickiness and the oils, we're gonna be adding honey, peanut butter. We have a little bit of a hazelnut spread and some coconut oil. The coconut oil and the peanut butter is gonna be a nice blend of saturated fats. We're not gonna be using tallow or lard. I just don't think that it will really taste that good. And we want to make these super tasty for out there. Yep, we want these to be something that we look forward to on the trail, and then we also want them to work. Yeah, work, give us energy and, and fill us up. I'm gonna mix the oil and the peanut butter and the hazelnut and honey first. I'll eat it in something, like a PB&J. Yeah. 
But just, we, we bought that peanut butter so long ago. I, we got this peanut butter like nine months, six months ago. Six months ago we haven't touched it. We definitely use other nuts in this. I mean, that's really good for having oils and adding the fats you want to this. You could use sesame seeds, flax seed. I don't have any of that on hand. Pumpkin seeds are also something really high in fat and protein. But again, we're just trying to use what we have on hand. And we're actually gonna be making, uh, we're not gonna do bars, we're gonna do like little balls, like golf ball sized little granola bites. So the mixture's still pretty hot. We're gonna let it cool down outside for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. And then we're gonna see if we can roll this into some balls, lay it out on this butcher paper, and then we're gonna freeze them. Whoa, maybe you should do that final part. Can I just hand them to you? Sure. That one's for What me. happened? That one's for me when I'm hungry. <laughs> I see, I didn't squish them that hard. That's good stuff. Maybe it's just big one to finish it off. There's a lot of colors I don't know where to go See a lot of colors Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze Drowning in the sea There's too many 
voices talking back at me. There are a lot of choices waiting to be made. Too many choices making me afraid. question Eric and I get a lot is do we shower or where do we shower? How is our setup? And our setup is super simple. In fact, we haven't changed it much since we've been here. We have a shower stall outside. It's not very glamorous. That's why we don't show it a lot. And we have two ways to heat up the water in the winter. One is our tankless water heater. We have a shower head attachment hooked to it and we run that outside through a window. The second way we heat water is just like this with our wood stove. We'll fill up a pot of water in the morning from the well and just honestly, it only takes a few hours to get a nice temperature for showering. And then we've got this nifty gadget. It's a rechargeable battery powered shower head. So we'll show you how this works outside. This is what we're gonna be using today. All right, we have arrived at our shower. Eric made two little attachments for the two different shower heads that we have inside the shower. And I'm going to put this in the water to show you how it works. Pretty straightforward. Uh, this is a really awesome little gadget we found and I'm gonna turn it off for a second. The, the pros to this one is it's simpler. This is obviously more ideal if you're camping or you just didn't have a setup like the one I mentioned before. It's more ideal for Eric and I for quicker showers. If I'm not rinsing my hair or something like that, it does last for both of us to take a shower, but ideally we would use closer to five gallons and this is about three gallons. As far as the battery life, I don't know how long it lasts, but I know it lasts a long time because we have used it for many showers before we recharge it and it's super simple to charge with our solar system. We really like this gadget. It's really cool. In fact, when we had a period of really, really cold weather, if you get down into the negatives, um, maybe like negative 20 Fahrenheit or so, and it's sustained, our windows actually freeze up. So it's very difficult to open them and it makes it extremely difficult to do showers at that time outside. And I know you're thinking, wow, that's really cool to be taking showers outside. But in fact, for Eric and I personally, it's really not a big deal. We don't mind it at all. Um, the, the key to a shower, in my opinion, is warm water running over your body. So if you get that and you accomplish that, really nothing else matters. So it's super low key, simple setup. Uh, we take showers as often as we want. We're gonna take a shower tonight and we will see you afterwards. We didn't get much sun today, so it's kind of a daily thing in the winter. We gotta fire up the generator and charge up the batteries for the house. This is our little generator that we use. It's a 1600 watt and it does a max of 2000. And we use this one because it's fuel efficient. I think this holds a little over a gallon of fuel. And when we're charging the house, it's not putting a huge load on this. So that gallon of fuel will run for about eight hours in this little machine. And at night, I like to run this for about an hour. So we're gonna get fired up. We're gonna head inside and we're gonna charge all of our equipment. <laughs> This 
is our inverter charge controller setup and this is what controls the charge that the batteries are getting when I got the generator running out there. And that noise you hear is the fans on the inverter. Anytime there's that much juice coming into this thing, uh, the fans kick on so that's the noise you hear with this. Whenever that's running, it's basically the time in our little cabin where we can have all the lights on and we charge all of our stuff and I usually do that over here on the kitchen counter. I like to keep up on the charging around here, so I only got a couple things to charge tonight. We got our two lights and we got our Yeti, and we use the Yeti upstairs when the inverter's off. We just use that to charge our phone. Let that generator run for about an hour. We should have a full charge, and then we will shut it down for the night. Got a lot of snow out here. I'm trying to pack down a little path out to the bees. And as you can tell, we haven't been out here for a little while, so we're gonna check in and see how the bees are doing. Ooh. I'm sure they really like that. We're nearing the end of January and our bees are still alive. And I haven't gotten in there and I, I can't go in there. I mean, you really shouldn't in the middle of winter, but this is when our bees last year kind of started to go downhill and they didn't make it into February or just the beginning of it. So these ones are loud and they roar. I mean, I can hear them once we clean things off, that kind of flusters them and I'll, I'll listen through the side and you can hear them in there. So I'm very hopeful that they'll make it. They need to make it at least until April to know that they're really gonna take off again next summer. But so far things are looking pretty promising and I think it has to do with this January we've had has been warmer than usual a lot warmer we've been in like the mid 20s which is really unusual I haven't even seen a negative temperature for a while and we made a lot of changes to the hives this year after we clean off the snow I usually go along with a stick just to make sure their entrance is clear they do come out for cleansing flights but not usually do they make it back in um, they usually die right on the outside and I'm gonna listen to see how they're doing it's the loudest I've heard them be all winter. I'm pretty sure they're really mad because we scraped all that ice off. So they're very loud and they are alive. Awesome. This is really exciting for us, being that this is the second winter and this would be our first success with overwintering. It's still a little too early to say that. I do have plans to most likely add on our third hive back if these two do overwinter successfully. out checking our traps or snares that we set yesterday Eric and I tried earlier in the season to do a little bit of snowshoe hair snaring and it just didn't really pan out that well there was a lot of lynx tracks early in the season which is not good every time we saw a rabbit track there was lynx tracks and we just figured no point of competing with them so we're waited a little bit later in the season it's awesome when there's fresh snow because you can see all the different animals tracks. Um, so this is great. We saw some areas where some there was more activity and we're just going to be checking our snares today. This is not where my traps are. My traps are over there. Nothing. Check three out of six. Got three more to go.
nothing today, but it was still a really nice day out here. We exercise Bandit and we're gonna head back. No, not no bro. I'm pretty sure we could both get up here with a shovel. Do you mind assisting me in this crap? Try just take just take light footsteps if you can. Well, where is the beams? You can't really. You're not gonna be able to tell from up there. Like, am I safe to stand on it? Sure. Sure. Need to go. I'm not gonna go through. Not that deep. Sure. 